Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. <coughs> oh, got a little bit of the corona there. <clears throat> Anyways, as you can tell, and thank you for all your subscriptions and all your letters that you're sending. We got a letter from uh, Peter Punak from... Uh, Kentucky, Illinois, or Illinois, yeah, Kentucky, is that right? <laughs> Illinois, it's from Illinois is what I'm trying to say. And he's like all the flutter about Peter Angelo going to Vegas. He's like, I can't believe that would happen. Why would they do that? Why would Vegas uh, spend all that money on one player and all of these things? Like that? And I was like, well, you know what? That is very interesting. And thank you for your letters. Like you said, we go down to the mailroom every morning, her, her, or, uh, Guido goes down there, grabs the letters from the mailroom, and comes up the stairs and pours them all over the letter table. And we have much frolic. We do a perlo dance. I'll show it to you sometime when I'm doing, uh, when I'm not have the screen up, but I'm doing it right now. Do a little perlo dance, and then we read the letters, and there's much frolic. So, okay, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to talk about Vegas and their bold move of uh, picking up Peter Angelo. Here we are, the, the Alex Peter Angelo right here, who is making now a quite impressive $8.8 million until it goes off the page, till eternity, pretty much. <laughs> so, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, no, it's seven years. Okay, seven years at $8.8 million for Peter Angelo. And what did they have to do? They had to, let's go over to Cap Friendly here. We all know what had to happen, right? They had to trade somebody away to do that. And uh, that was the Vancouver Canucks. And they went down to Vancouver there and they said, hey, we need, uh, we need to make some room here. And Vancouver said, oh, you do, do you? Well, how about, how about some Nate Schmidt? Nate Schmidt would do fine for us. And I'm going to get into this video, but here we are. Nate Schmidt of the six million, let's say, for five years, gets traded over to, of course, Vancouver to make room for our for our fu funny little friend here, Alex Peter Angelo. So the question is, how much did they improve? Did they improve their club enough? And by the way, they still are over the cap. So they're going to have to do something to get under the cap, which shouldn't be that difficult. I think it's a million and some. Uh, I don't know exactly what they want to do that. I, I maybe, hopefully not a William Carey or something like that. Um, you know, that's the thing is now you're talking about Schultz and, uh, whatever other player that they need to, uh, remove from their lineup in order to get cap. They could send somebody down to the minors, possibly maybe a no check or something like that. I don't think that would work. So it's going to be difficult, but there's another player. So the question is, are they a better team? Well, with Schultz, you got you had a probably on a great team. He's not your in your one-two spot, but he can play a one-two spot. He would probably be more in the two-three spot, or you know, three-four something like that. So what? Vegas is thinking is we didn't really have a number one besides like on on the on the right side we didn't have a true number one defenseman and that is extremely important although Schultz did uh, play a lot of minutes Peter Angelo can play crazy minutes and very effectively he can play the power play he can play the penalty kill Schultz could but not to the same level as Peter Angelo then you have Shea Theodore, who's coming out as possibly a Nor Norris Trophy candidate next year. We'll see if he's able to keep it up. Um, they got him under a great contract. So they got Alex Pietrangelo for all the money. And by the time he gets to the end of this, it is very suspicious as to whether he's going to be at an $8.8 .8 million level by that time. But you never know. You never know. He hasn't had too many injuries. The guy is a big dude let's look at his size and that's the other thing six foot three 191 my friends plays it all day too plays very physical he's stronger 
They became stronger. They got a true number one, and they're going for it. This is the thing. Um, Vegas has always been going for it. Look at their other contracts. Max Pacioretty in three years is going to be 34 years old. Is he going to be worth that $7 million? Probably. I'm not sure. It's actually not a bad contract. William Carlson, $6 million for eternity. Uh, by the time he gets up into the 35-year range, 34, 35, he's probably not going to be that player. Um, jo uh, Marcia Soltz is going to be 34. This is going to be a, a period in here where maybe a rebuild may be necessary. Uh, hopefully, these guys can have enough value at that time that they can do sort of a re- uh, not really a rebuild as much as a retool, as they like to say. Um, and then Cody Glass. Of Co Cody Glass is like their only real young player, which is really odd for an expansion team to be built on so many old players. But all that being said, the question today was, are they a better team now with Peter Angelo instead of Schultz? And the answer is, yes, they are a better player, team now. Is this going to be harmful for them down the road? Probably. Um, this could be very difficult for them down the road, but they're not worrying about that. So now here comes the other thing, and I was going to do a video about it, but I'll just talk. I'll just talk about it right here, right now. Uh, Mark Andre Fleury and Laner, they're planning on keeping both of them. I, they're saying that, you know, having two goaltenders is very valuable right now and uh, all of those things like that, and that's why they want to keep them. Kind of backtracking on the fact that Marc-Andre Fleury had a little value out there. Um, there wasn't too many teams, obviously, that wanted to trade one of their backups back to them for his services to cover a little bit of the cap or anything of that nature. So eventually they just said we're keeping them, which makes it very difficult for in the long run. However, it probably, as circumstances show, may be the right move. I mean, they only have to lose a million or so and then they're under the cap. Problem is they're going to be going into the season now full cap and they're not going to be able to add here. So um, if injuries happen, it can propose a bit of a problem, although people go on injured reserve, but you don't know for how long. It's it could be a very difficult to balance this throughout a season. That is going to be condensed and would be best to have some depth in your lineup for a condensed schedule because these guys could be pretty tired come to the end of the season if there, if there isn't really any sensible players that can replace them. Um, there are one, Peyton Krebs has been going crazy in junior. It's possible he could be ready for at least spot duty. That would help out a lot. And Nicholas Hag is probably ready for full-time duty. Now that would be be on the left, on left defense for uh, Vegas. So that would be um, a, could could be a replacement. That's where they could get their cap space. They could trade somebody like Braden McNabb if they really think Hag is good and ready. Hag is 21 years old. He's been playing in the minors for a while. He may be ready. At the very least, he should be able to play in the seventh, fifth, or sixth spot and uh, be able to move up when needed when injuries happen. Overall, it's a little bit risky, but I get it. I get the trade. It does make them better for this year. My question is, is putting yourself, and there's a lot of teams like this, purposely putting yourself tight against the cap like that in a condensed schedule. Are they going to be able to find the players to be able to replace these guys if necessary. Right now, they got guys like Carl Dahlstrom, Vegas does, um, who is not a guy you want on a regular basis in your lineup. Um, so that's what I'm my main concern about it. I do get the trade. I'm not sure I totally like it, but we're going to find out, aren't we, boys and girls? Anyways, thank you for your letters and thank you for your subscriptions. Also, head over to my Patreon. Patreon. Go to the Patreon app. Look up BPAL picks. Hitting tennis picks like freaking crazy over there. People making lots of money. Uh, we do baseball picks. We're hitting on football right now quite a bit. And uh, we're just having much frolic. Fun and frolic over there at uh, 
BPAL Pixel Land and Fun and Frolic here at Perlo Land. My next video, I think I'm going to be talking about said Vancouver Canucks and how they did a, what I think possibly could be a fantastic job of grabbing a top 3 4 defenseman for a third round pick. Looking for right situations is the way to go in a cap world that's gone crazy. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.